So we knew that, uh, that the renin-angiotensin system was involved in uric acid, but we also had some uh, experimental data suggesting that this system called nitric oxide was being inhibited. And um, as you know, nitric oxide is a vasodilator. Uh, it's produced by the endothelium. <laughs> it keeps the blood vessels healthy. And the people who discovered nitric oxide, three of them got the Nobel Prize. So it's a very important system that keeps the body healthy. And, um, and it keeps the blood vessels dilated and, and you know, blocks inflammation in the blood vessels. It uh, blocks clotting. Um, it's really an amazingly important system. And in young people, nitric oxide levels are high. Endothelial function tends to be good. But as we develop kidney disease or as we develop high blood pressure or as we develop diabetes, this endothelial function is, is hurt. So uh, what we started looking at and we discovered that when the uric acid was high, endothelial function tended to be poor. And there was even a paper in the JAMA, I think it was in the JAMA, that looked at circadian rhythm and they found that when uric acid goes up in early morning, nitric oxide levels fall and, and you know, um, there seems to be a circadian rhythm to it as well. And, um, and w when we put uric acid on cells, like endothelial cells, we could block nitric oxide. <clears throat> What was fascinating, David, is it does it more, multiple ways. It does it by working on, on the transport of arginine. It r works on, on it by blocking the enzyme. It, it can scavenge nitric oxide itself. We found that it actually binds nitric oxide. I mean, it really has multiple ways of reducing nitric oxide. And, and um, our group wasn't the only group that looked at this. Other groups confirmed it, and there and there are multiple mechanisms. And if we can block, if we can increase nitric oxide, it turns out we could actually, um, we when we increase nitric oxide, we could block some of the effects of, of uric acid, such for example uh, hypertension. 